Yes, sir. I'm John Perna. I'm from Lexington County. And nobody pays me to be here. I work for the people who pay you to be here. Uh, there's a statement that has been uh, attributed to Queen Marie Antoinette, let them eat cake. Uh, and uh, it, the statement is thought by historians as being so ignorant and naive as to not understand that when people have no bread, that they also have no cake. Uh, historians find it noteworthy that anyone could be so naive, but while the mobs of France, French people, were certainly found it to be an outrage, and historians today are marveled to see th that someone could be that naive, but while we muse about the foolishness of the past, we should ask ourselves whether such foolishness still exists. Today we see a mass movement that is so naive that they make Marie Antoinette look clever and astute. The fact is, that every single spending bill that is passed is by the House of Representatives, and every single congressman must face re-election every two years. It only takes 51 percent of the voters to demand that an elected representative balance the budget. It o that only needs to happen in 218 out of 435 districts. So 51 percent of the voters in 218 districts could send a Congress to Washington that would balance the budget. Of course, the 51 percent of the voters can also limit terms. Uh, that's what's called an, an election. Congress could balance the budget in one day if it wanted to. And so what we're now being told is we have another process that is tremendously much more elaborate that we're going to use to, to achieve a balanced budget. And no notice seems to be of, taken of the fact that the very same people who are electing all those congressmen that are voting to spend the money are the same people that elect you legislators here in the state of South Carolina. And so if we have the awareness that is necessary in order to elect uh, the legislature here that will balance the budget through this a much more elaborate con concept involving uh, all these other states and conventions and everything like that, then why haven't we already balanced the budget by sending 218 <laughs> congressmen to Washington who would balance the budget? Of course, if we had a balanced budget amendment, that wouldn't say that they wouldn't balance the budget on the backs of the taxpayers. They, they have all these polls that they come up with and say, oh, look how many people are in favor of a balanced budget. Well, believe me, if I got that poll, I would be counted as somebody on their side because I'm in favor of a balanced budget. But I'm not in favor of a constitutional convention. What they're doing is giving us a very good reason for doing a very bad thing. All this comes down to is whether or not you believe that the ends justify the means. Uh, where were all the, uh, the balanced budget advocates when we were taking all those votes up there in the Congress to give money away? Uh, we, we, give, we borrow money from big dictators and give, them away, give it away to small dictators. Where were all those balanced budget advocates when our Congress was voting to give billions of dollars to Ukraine so that they could kick it back to American politicians? The, there exists a movement that goes beyond the naivete of Marie Antoinette with the statement, let them eat cake. The assertion is that while we do not have enough public awareness to use a process that only requires 51 percent of the voters in only half of the congressional districts, we will be able to prevail with another process that requires three-fourths of the state legislatures. There seems to be no notice taken of the fact that the same legislators that are elected by those same voters that have failed to change the congressman at every, any given elect, election. State legislators are to select some assortment of delegates who will be ele not be elected directly by the people. And the illusion is that that group of delegates who are not elected directly by the people will save the people from the elected congressmen who continuously vote for an unbalanced budget. They have no bread, so let them eat cake. The illusion is that the group of delegates will be like those that were at the uh, Constitutional Convention of 1789. Those were the leaders of a freedom movement which had just defeated tyranny. Who will the delegates at the convention be today? George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and James Madison will not be there. The, do state legislators consistently pass legislation that protects us from unconstitutional uh, usurpation today? We're being told that it is because of the unconstitutional usurpation that we need to amend the Constitution. 
That which the Constitution already says should not be done is what is being done. So we are t told that we need to tell them again by writing another Constitution that this is what they should not do. Try this. Put some money out on the sidewalk and put a sign out there that says no one is allowed to steal the money. You come back the next day, the money is gone. So what are you going to do? You're going to put some more money on the sidewalk, and this time you're going to put two signs out there that tell them they're not allowed to steal the money. Boy, that'll fix them. Uh, do, do we have the votes right now in our state legislatures or in any state legislature to have the votes to stand up against unconstitutional federal, federal usurpation right now? If we did, the states would have nullified Obamacare. They would have already stopped the federal infringement on the right to keep and bear arms and so many other things. We are being told that the states cannot nullify unconstitutional federal usurpations, but that it has been done over and over again. There was a time when Congress passed a law, the Fugitive Slave Act, that basically said that if a person escaped from slavery to a non-slave state, that that state had the obligation to turn him back and send him back to his slave masters. Well, that wasn't enforced, and it was nullified. In fact, uh, there were states that actually passed uh, laws rejecting the Fugitive Slave Act. This was perfectly fine with the Constitution. Okay, and the same thing was uh, the jury nullification prohibition was not enforced anywhere except where it was the will of the people, and it was finally repealed. And, and Thomas Jefferson and James Madison drafted the Kentucky Resolutions and the Virginia Re Resolutions, which declared the Alien and Sedition Act null and void. Uh, that, that these things are just uh, examples of the ways state can rein in on the federal government right now. If you look at the Article 5 and see what it says, you'll see that it says that the federal government, the Congress, is going to approve the method of ratification of those amendments that come out of that that uh, are, uh, a convention. So basically you're going to go through all this trouble to have a convention and then you're going to hand it to the Congress and say and let, ask them whether or not they like it. And if they don't like it, they're going to throw it away. Well, they, they are all telling us that the, uh, uh, the outcome of the convention can pre be predetermined and limited. If it was predetermined, why would we need a constitutional convention? Why rent hotel rooms and meeting rooms and buy plane tickets to do something that's already been decided right. in advance? Mr. Perna, yeah. we're going to have to bring it in for landed, sir. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Um, well, I'll, I'll just sit, close with one thought there. If you want to know what the meaning of a limited constitutional convention is, go into your bank and tell them you would like for them to go home that day with the doors unlocked and the vault unlocked with a sign out on the door that says nobody's allowed to steal the money. Now what your bankers tell you will give you a wonderful idea of what a limited constitutional convention is. If you look in Article 5 and look for the, uh, the clause that gives us the power to limit the constitutional convention, you will not find it. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Gene, it looks like South.